ಸರ್ವಮಂಗಳಮಾಂಗಲ್ಯ ಶಿವೇ ಸರ್ವಾತ್ಮಶಾಧಿಕಿ ಶರಣೇ ತ್ರಯಂಬಕೆ ಗೌರೀ ನಾರಾಯಣೇ ನಮೋಸ್ತೆ ಮಂತ್ರ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ ನೋಸ್ ದ ಮಂತ್ರ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿವೈನ್ what is the meaning of that word mantra man means heart tra through so then mantra means through our heart it is not coming from the mind it has to come from heart so when we mean heart it means physical heart no so why it is necessary to chant mantra from the heart or soul the mantra itself is divine the mantras any mantras itself is the divine so when we say it is divine which part is divine within us brain <laughs> can we say brain is the divine <laughs> no the soul is the divine so that's why the mantra it has to come from the soul what will happen if we chant mantra from the soul it will create the energy or vibrations that the vibrations will add into the divine part which is within us which is the divine part so it is coming from the soul and then it reaches the soul in this process our soul will become stronger so all the mantras it has to come from the soul so when it come from the soul when we chant it creates the vibration the another name for the vibration is energy another name for the energy is power so the vibration energy power that which we create through chanting it will mingle with the soul it is like the journey of the seed the seed it starts its journey from the soil then it grow as the tree then it brings flowers fruits then it become seed when it get dry it back to soil so mantra also like this when we chant the mantras you know the vibration of the mantras it is not just for the body it mingled with soul so that means it will not help the body it will help the body when you have the fragrance or a scent in the bottle you know not just the scent will have the fragrance the bottle also will have the fragrance why that is the tool the bottle is the tool that is something which is holding the essence fragrance so similarly when we create the positive energy or vibrations our body is the tool so the tool also get blessed 
mainly our soul will energize and become stronger and get strengthened from the chantings. What will happen when our soul becomes strengthened with the vibrations? Good, Ara, yes. It is something outside. Apart from that, what will happen when the divine energy, because we all know our soul is the divine part. On top of that, when we add the vibrations and we strengthen the soul, it starts to radiate all its divine qualities. What are all the divine qualities? All the positive is the divine qualities. So that is the time we find peace, bliss, unconditional love and everything. Because when the divine energy becomes stronger, as how our mind and the physical body has the character, every body has the character, similarly divine also have the character. The physical character which we have is mixed. Morning it will be okay, evening don't know. <laughs> you know, the next day we are not sure. <laughs> You know, but the character of the divine is not like that. It is the ultimate peace that is the character of the divine. So when we strengthen the divine energy within us, it starts to expose the divine character, which is the biggest blessings of this entire journey, the peace, the bliss, the unconditional love, all these good things. So, chanting mantras is very, very important. Many people in the spiritual path may wonder, sometimes worried, I am in this path for a long time, you know, still I have not succeeded. But here the success is not that something you will get sometime. The first day of your entry to the spiritual path itself is the success. Just imagine there are so many billions of people in the world, but not everyone is blessed to be in this path. So when someone is in the path, from that day the process starts. From that day. You know, someone can say, oh, I am not reached the divine or divine are not reached yet to me. You know, it is not the success. You had the opportunity what you have to be with the divine, to understand the divine, to believe the divine, to have the faith in the divine. This itself is the blessings of divine. Can donkey have the awareness of divine? You know, when some procession is going, you know, of deity, all the humans who all are sitting on the roadside, what they do when the procession comes? They will just stand and then they pray and they do something. Why they just do that? They have the sense that this is divine. How much sense that is different? 
but at least they have that sense to feel or to understand this is divine. If donkey is sitting there, does ever donkey will stand? No. No, why? You know, it is very intelligent. You know, it's not mean, donkey is not having the brain. You know, it is very intelligent. It can do many things, but it is not blessed with the sixth sense, which is to analyze, to realize and to feel. It is possible only for humans. Even in the humans, how many of them are blessed? You know, there are people, there are countries without the conscience of the divine. They don't know the meaning of the word divine. Not just for one or two. The whole country will be like that sometimes. Out of all this, when we are blessed with this faith and devotion, it means it has not happened with our effort and intelligence. It has happened with divine grace and blessings. When we get the small things, you know, we say, oh, he is blessed, he did a good karma. You know, you just imagine when we get the biggest thing in the universe, which is divine, how much blessings one must have to get that. So, in the spiritual path, when we are there, being in the path itself is the blessings. You know, when you are with a good teacher or master, then it is the master's or teacher responsibility to take care. All we need to do is just be obedient. <laughs> just follow, just surrender. You know, the process is happening. For someone, it will happen in a week. For someone, it will happen in a month. But for someone, it could happen in the year. It's okay. At least, we may get that after the year. <laughs> You just imagine about the people who are not yet having this conscious or awareness about the divine. So when we compare with them, we are much, much, much better and blessed. So in the spiritual path, you know, we do several practices. One is the mantras. As I must say, the mantras has the potential to create the vibrations. Sometimes even in that, some devotees may feel, you know, some experiences by chanting. Some, they may experience little bit, someone, they don't. You know, it's not me, it's not working. Today we are not feeling. The effort which we are taking makes us to feel that tomorrow. You know, so it is like the mantras. When I was telling about mantras, when we chant mantra, generally, we think, oh, when everyone chant, it will have the same effect. No. It differs based on many things. One, it is based on your mantra. And number two, 
it is based on what mantras number 3 it is based on from where you got that mantra number 4 it is based on the karma that which the soul did in the previous life it is just a aim for example when we chant aim for the enlightened souls when they chant this aim 108 times it is enough they can just connect with the divine be in the state of oneness but for someone who is not there yet they need to chant more so mantras though it is a one word but it is based on the karma the way how we get that mantra so that's why in spiritual path when we chant mantra it is very important to get that mantra from the guru from the master why can't we read the mantra from the book yes it is the mantra but when you get the master when you get the mantra from the guru the mantra come from is not mind from the soul when it is come from the master soul it reaches the soul it is like lighting the lamp one may have the wick one may have the oil if there is the no spark what is the use of wick and oil so that's why in spiritual path this initiation we call this diksha this initiation is very 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 important yes there is the divine there is the lamp there is the ghee there is the wick we are very sure yes there is but it needs the spark the book doesn't give the spark you know you can read the mantras you know but it is not from the soul you know so that's why it is very important to get the mantra from the guru because when you get the mantra from the guru since the guru is the realized soul when you get the mantra from that soul it reaches our soul when it reaches the soul that day the lamp start to light so that light which we had from the guru when we practice that it is like pouring the ghee on the lamp every day without the spark the ghee in the lamp will never get look it will be always there you know but when the lamp is lighting they need need to pour the ghee which is our practice once you get the mantra from the guru and when you do the chanting because it is like the spark it is coming from the soul it is not coming from the mind when we need some help for the physical body where do we go doctors when we have some problems you know with the law where do we go in the court or police station or somewhere when we need the divine grace and blessings and the experience you can't go any of these places that's why 
we go to the master who is connected to the divine and receive the blessings. So that's why the mantra diksha, our initiation is very, very, very important. So we call that diksha. What is mean by diksha? It is from Dikshinyam. Dikshinyam. Dikshinyam means very powerful. From that, when you take a little bit, a Diksha from Dikshinyam. A spark from the power. It's called Diksha. So it is coming from the Dikshinya. Dikshinya means powerful. What powerful? Divine grace. So that master, where he got that power? From another master. That master, where he get that? From another master. If you just keep on checking this lineage, it will end up with the divine. So the diksha or the initiation when someone is getting means it is not from the human body. It is from the divine. So that's why it's called diksha. Because it is from Dikshinyam, powerful. Because the ultimate source for all this enlightened soul is divine. So that is very powerful. Dikshinyam. So from the Dikshinyam, when we get, it's called Diksha. So, chanting the mantras, it brings the divine grace, but it is not necessary that it works always same for everyone. It's based on karmas. You know, as we all know, as how we strongly believe that I am having the brain, Hmm? <laughs> Similarly, most of the people in the spiritual path believe that we have divine. Then why we can't be like divine? Huh? Why? Divine is there. We know, yes, there is the divine within me, in a form of soul. Amma told many times about this. You know, yes, though I can't feel, but I believe, because since some are told there is divine in me. But then why we can't be like divine? It is wrapped with the maya, the karmas. So because of that, we can't experience the divinity. So then what to do? When you make the divine energy stronger and stronger through chanting, it will just burn the wrath and then it will just come out of that. For example, when we light the camphor, you know, on the top of the camphor, if you just cover a thick blanket, what will happen? Hmm? Goes out. On the top of the camphor, when you put a piece of paper, what will happen? Why? Because the fire is powerful than this paper. 
if it is the blanket, the fire in the camphor is not have that enough power to burn this blanket and come out of that. Our karma is also like that. For someone it is like a paper, but for someone it is like a thick blanket. <laughs> huh? Very thick blanket. For some people two, three blanket is there. <laughs> So it's not me, my mantra is not working. Everyone's mantra is working, but our karma is being very stronger than this our practices. <laughs> so we should not get tired or we should not give up our practices. Hmm? We should not get tired or give up, oh no, it's not working, no. When it is working for so many people, you know, when it is working for needy, then why can't it is working for someone? <laughs> for needy. It is working. Yeah. That's what I might say. <laughs> so, here we should not give up. So that every effort that we take, you know, it will bring the result. It is in the process. Here we need to understand because we know in this lifetime we are very good. We never did anything bad. But we don't know what we did in the past. So all this blanket or paper, it is not from this life. <laughs> it is from the past life. So for some people it may be concrete wall. <laughs> but it may be anything. You know, even if it is the mountain, which is stronger than concrete, but energy can pass through that mountain. You know, we can see that. Like for example, with the physical things, there is the limitation. But for the energy, there is no limitation. For a small example, what we can see when we build the new temple, before we install the statue, underneath of the statue, what we do? We install yantra. We energize the yantra and then we install. You know, it is not surprising, you know, when yantra is just openly there to send its blessings and the energy, you know, we can feel that. But on top of the yantra, what we are doing? We are placing a statue which is about 15 tons. <laughs> what is happening after that? You can feel more energy than before. Before it is just the energy. Now the energy connects with its form. Because the statue, whatever we install, it is not just like as we imagine. It is based on Vedas and the ancient scripts, based on the yantras, based on the mantras. So before it is just the energy. Now the energy got the form. So now it becomes powerful. <laughs> so we can't stop that energy. You cannot say, say, okay, I built a big wall. After this energy will not come. Air may not come. Fire may not come. Water may not come. But energy will come. Mantras creates energy, 
though our soul is wrapped, you know, either with a paper, blanket, concrete wall, you know, or casting, iron casting, or whatever it is, still energy can break all this and it exposes. So we need not to worry about, oh, if Amma said karma, that means if I have some karma, strong karma, does it mean I can't succeed? No. Because the energy from the mantras, you know, nothing can stop that energy. It just reaches any level. So, in the spiritual practice, when we do mantras, we need to do with the love, devotion and faith. That is very, very, very important. You know, diamond, you know, we all know it is precious, but not everyone will have the same happiness when they found the diamond. It is based on their knowledge about diamond. If someone who knows about the diamond and the precious of the diamond, when they found the diamond, their happiness will be very big. For someone who is not having any awareness or any knowledge about the diamond, for him, if they found that big, you know, ball of diamond, you will say, oh, how too much weight it is, how can I carry this? It's the same diamond, but it is based on the knowledge. So mantras, practicing the mantra is also like this. When we think, okay, I am chanting mantra, no, that is divine. When you chant one time, you are sowing the seed. That every seed that we sow in the soil, it will grow. Mantra is also like that. Every mantra, we cannot say, oh, this mantra become waste, you know. Maybe we are not, you know, experiencing that. The process is happening. It starts to break the concrete wall. We don't know that. You know, it starts to break the iron casting. We don't know that. But it is in the process. So with the mantras, when we practicing the mantras, we should do with the love and devotion, apart from that, you know, we should do with the, what we call, it's like, when you found something very big in the life, how you feel? Gratitude. You know, so similarly, we should do with gratitude, because this is something, this one letter, if someone reads the whole Rig Veda, which is about thousands of mantra, what it produces? Energy. When you just chant I, what it produces? Finish. <laughs> you know? So what is in this pick of book? This size of book, it is same in one letter. It is energy. Finish. So we need to do with love and devotion. You know, we should not do that as a routine. You know, when you do that as a routine, you know, or as a work, you know, you don't get that. You should do that this is the solution for my life. Let it be whatever problem it is. 
This is the solution for my life. Not just for this life, for my birth. And when we do with that, we get the blessings. So, the important thing in the spiritual path is, as Sanna said before, the patience is very important. You know, let the result come, you know, you are safe. You know, you are with divine. So what else you need? You are safe. You know, so it is just simple thing. What is the ultimate goal of the spiritual path? Moksha. So which means you will be with the divine. To reach that, in that process, you are with so what? <laughs> so now also you are there, after breaking your head, doing all this, again you will be there. So don't worry about that. <laughs> so just relax. <laughs> Anyway, you will be with the divine. <laughs> Maybe this is much more easier. You know, you can enjoy. You can enjoy the beauty of divine. You know, you can enjoy the oneness of the divine. But whereas in moksha, there is you don't feel that oh, I am here, I am with the divine. No, there is no I. It is just oneness. So why hurry? <laughs> why hurry? Just relax. You know, if someone says, oh, you are failed, be happy. <laughs> you know, just be happy. You just ask. So you are past. Yes. Where you are going? To be right. I am with the be right. <laughs> Anyway, you will be with the divine. But when you are in the spiritual path, if you are not in this path, then you may lose. But when you are in the path, you are with the divine, either in the form of process or in the form of success. Huh? Form of blessing. <laughs>